<coughs> excuse me. Maybe I shouldn't have started quite so soon. <coughs> All right. Hi. Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I am your host, Shannon LaBruyere, and I am alive and loving it today. My goal is for you, my Facebook friends and family, my goal is for you to thrive in change. Hi, Missy. Welcome. You're the first one to jump in the pool. Woohoo! Glad to see you. Yes. My goal is for you to thrive in change. Life is all about changes. The changes that we pick, the changes that we want, the changes that we don't want that come at us anyway. And my fervent belief is that if we can get good at managing the small changes, when the big changes hit us, we are going to be so much better off. Jennifer, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I hope you're feeling better. I know you've been under the weather, so I'm glad you found it in you to jump on to Sunday Night Live. And I am so excited tonight to talk with you about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. And that is time management. And just so you know, I'm going to give you a free pass. Time management is a myth. It is impossible. You can't do it. So check it off. Throw it away. You don't have to worry about time management ever again. Linda, I'm glad you're here. Oh, and somebody's happy that they don't have to worry about time management. And it's true. You do not. So I want you to put on your thinking caps. And I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Who here knows of Oprah Winfrey? Anybody? Yeah, we've all heard of Oprah Winfrey. She is an amazing powerhouse of a woman who has her own television network. She had her own television show, which she then turned into a television network. She is a published author. She has her own magazine. Linda knows Oprah. We all love Oprah. She's amazing. She's changing the world. I want to be like Oprah. How about LeBron James? Anybody? Anybody a basketball fan? LeBron James, one of the best basketball players in the world right now. And hi, Edgar. Glad you jumped on. LeBron James, from a young age, was identified as being a really, really good basketball player. And he has turned those talents into worldwide influence, millions and millions of dollars, many, many championship rings. It's, it's pretty astounding what LeBron James has done. I want to be like LeBron James. George, I'm glad you're here. Daniel, I'm glad you're here as well. Thanks for jumping in. We're talking about these famous people, Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James. How about Warren Buffett? He's one of the richest men in the world, a cabillionaire who's not just great at earning money and investing, but he's also this amazing philanthropist and he is giving away millions and millions of dollars and has committed to give away all of his billions before he dies because he doesn't want to leave the earth with any of it he knows it has to stay here and do good amazing warm buffett oh my gosh what about john c maxwell my mentor one of my favorite teachers and leadership experts has influenced every country on the planet to help people up level, up level their leadership skills. He has written over a hundred books. He's done amazing things. And guess what? You and I have just the same amount of hours in our day as Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, Warren Buffett, John C. Maxwell, any hero that you watched, you have exactly the same amount of time that they have. What are you doing with it? And so then we get caught on this treadmill of, oh my gosh, I've got to manage my time better. I, I need to manage my time better. I just don't seem to have time for anything. And it seems like stuff is falling off of our plate right and left and we just try to cram more in and we're not getting any better. We're not becoming world influencers. We're not becoming the best in our field. We're just barely getting by. Hi, Samantha, I'm glad you jumped on. We're just barely getting by. So what is the difference between Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, Warren Buffett, your hero, 
my heroes. What is the difference between them and us? It is not how we manage our time. It is how we manage ourselves. It's how we manage ourselves. Because we all have the same bank account, if you will, of time. And every one of us, no matter where we work, who we are, where we live, how many kids, how many responsibilities, how much money, how poor, how it doesn't matter. We all get 164 hours a week. And we get to do anything we want with it. And sadly, what we often do is fritter it away. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to fritter it away because time management is a myth. Self-management is real, it's important, it's impactful, and it's going to allow you to accomplish those dreams to, yes, love that, to accomplish those dreams. It's going to allow you to keep those resolutions. It's going to allow you to have the life that you crave and it starts with two things. So, once we realize that we have to manage ourselves, that it's not the calendar's fault, it's not everybody else's fault, it's ours. Once we realize that, we can start making our choices to align with that. And I want you to think about something. Um, I used to think that I had to spend a lot of time deciding what I was going to say yes to. Hi, Linda, glad you jumped on, and Kevin, always a pleasure to have you. Um, I spent a lot of energy deciding what was I going to say yes to, but it is just as important to decide what you're going to say no to. And when we start getting our priorities in order, it allows us to manage ourselves. Yes, Kevin, thank you. And um, Pam, I'm so glad you jumped on. And Samantha, Joe, glad you're here. Is the baby sleeping? Hopefully he is, giving you a little break. I'm so glad you jumped on. Our, our managing of ourselves really does boil down to how we've set our priorities. And sometimes our priorities in our head do not match the priorities that we're living out. And I fell into this trap. And some of you have seen some of my previous very public Sunday Night Live confessions of my desire to be healthier, my desire to exercise. You saw me check in at Megan's Fitness, and, uh, and I was, I was doing great. And then December hit, right? And December, you know, that can be dicey. We've got a lot of commitments in December. I mean, come on, it's Christmas and you have to go to see Santa and you have to go to the Wolcott Mill and ride on the horse-drawn carriage and, and it's a time for family and for fun and for festivities. So nothing wrong with December, but I hit a hiccup in December with scheduling. It's like, ugh, you know what? I just, I can't get in there to the gym. Um, I just don't have time just don't have time. And so then we get to the first of the year and mind you, I'm I'm leading workshops on how to set vision and goals. You know, I'm out there, I'm preaching. I'm preaching it. Folks, we can do it. We got to achieve our dream. We can do it. And yet, I I couldn't manage to find time to schedule a workout. Every time I went to go put it on my calendar, there was something already going on something already going on. And so my priorities in my head didn't match the priorities in my calendar. And so that's one of the first things you have to do. You have to know your priorities and then you have to do some soul searching like I had to do today. Shannon, do you value being healthy or do you not? And if you value being healthy, you're going to have to schedule it. This is a little tip. If you think you're lying to yourself, if you think that the priorities that you've established in your head, and a lot of times we can rattle them off, okay? So we know what our prior priorities are supposed to be. So we all know it's supposed to be our faith, our family, um, and our taking care of ourselves, right? 
Um, we, we know that these are rocks in our life. These are things that are really important. And we tell ourselves that we know we've got our priorities straight. Whatever your priorities may be, you tell yourself that. But I want you to do a little spot check. I want you to think for a minute what your calendar says about your priorities. Yeah, thumbs up, right? What does your calendar say about your priorities? Because there are two things that never lie about your priorities. And you might want to write this down. Two things that never lie about your priorities. Your calendar and your checkbook. Where are you spending or investing your time? And where are you spending or investing your money? Those are the true indicators of your priorities. Oof. Because when I looked at my calendar, I realized I had been filling my calendar with so much stuff. And I've, I've got something here that, um, yeah, Linda, yeah, body, I'm glad you jumped on. I've got a little visual aid I want to show you here. This is minutia. It's like little pebbles, little sand, cat litter maybe, little stuff. And when I really started looking at self-management, I did an assessment and it is scary. It's called the 15 minute miracle. I broke my day from the time I woke up until the time I went to bed, I broke my day into 15 minute increments. Bobby, glad you're here. 15 minute increments. And I kept track of where I spent my time. Looking at my calendar, if you will. And what I discovered was this, that I didn't have time many mornings to do devotions, which is something that my head says I valued. I didn't have time to phone my children uh, because our schedules didn't coincide and I just didn't have time. Being connected with my kids, something that I value, didn't have time. But when I did a spot check, when I looked at my calendar and what I was actually doing, I was spending, I'm not lying, over an hour a day playing words with friends. I want you to give me a thumbs up if you've been there. Words with friends, Fortnite, I don't know, maybe you're addicted to Tetris from way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, right? Unbelievable how much time I was spending just a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, over an hour a day. And I don't have time to read a book. I don't have time to read a book. Seven hours a week. How many books could I read in seven hours? If I'm a slow reader, I could read one. I could have been reading four books a month. I could have been reading fun books. I could have been reading educational books. They wouldn't have had to be self-help books. They wouldn't have had to be leadership development. They wouldn't have had to be tough. They could have been Harry Potter, which I'm a big fan. I didn't have time. I didn't have time to relax. There was so much stuff I didn't have time for because I filled it. What? kind of junk is in your day? Eh. You're browsing through email. Eh. You're answering every phone call. Eh. Maybe you're driving through Starbucks and grabbing a coffee and sitting in the parking lot and clipping coupons. Minutia. Minutia, minutia, minutia. And then, how many priorities? How many priorities can you fit? When you filled your life with all of the little stuff that doesn't matter, there's a better way. And that's why it is so important for you to know your priorities. You have to know your priorities. What happens when you know your priorities? And then you take a look at your calendar and you schedule them. You put, like I did after I did this assessment, I put on my calendar as a repeating event that the first Saturday of every month at 4 p.m. I was going to have dinner at my house and I was going to invite my family. Thank you for jumping on, Colin. It's great to see you. 
I made the commitment on my calendar that I was going to make sure that I could spend time with my family and it's a rock. And everything else in my life, everything else has to fit in around it. Right? Right? Isn't that better? Isn't that the way that we want to live? This is how Oprah Winfrey and LeBron James and Warren Buffett and John Maxwell and Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and all of these people that we know have accomplished huge, amazing things. This is how they did it. They did not fill their life with the little silly time-wasting stuff and then feel sad because they didn't have room for what was important. Today, this morning, I went onto the uh, Mind Body app and I opened up Megan's Fitness and I scheduled my next two workouts and then I paid for them. They're done. My health is a priority. I made sure it went in first. I am sick and tired of having the important things in life get swept aside by silly stuff that doesn't matter. If there's a TV show you love, you can tape it. Wow, you can DVR it. How's that? You can record it. You, nobody tapes anything, but you know what I'm saying. There is so much stuff that if we really want to do it, we can. We tell ourselves we don't have time. We tell ourselves we don't have money. And yet, we drive through and spend, like I confessed, I did, $25 a week on McDonald's Egg McMuffins and a large Diet Coke every week. But I didn't have enough money to take a great class that I knew was gonna sharpen my skills and help me to assess people's personalities and help them to be more effective. Couldn't afford it because I was spending money on something that didn't matter. All this stuff, remember this. This is the lesson for today. This is the lesson for life. Don't fill it with the little stuff so that you don't have room for the important and big. Make sure that you know your priorities and that you schedule your priorities. You schedule them first. And the final key, first of all, I'll just go over them for you. The first one is know your priorities. Not just here, but here. Dig deep. What do you really value? What matters to you? What do you care about? Write them down. Don't let them get lost in the shuffle. Write them down. Make them the pork chop on your plate. We talk about things are falling off our plate. Protect the pork chop. The important stuff needs to stay there. Protect the important things. Establish them, schedule them, and then the last thing is quit making excuses. You have 168 hours in a week, just like Oprah Winfrey, just like the President of the United States, just like any hero that you can pick. Sports, it doesn't matter. We all start with the same budget of time. The difference is, how do we manage ourselves? We have to be strong enough to know what we want, to choose what we want, to schedule it. So that, my friends, is how you get let off the hook on time management and get on the hook for something that's far more valuable, that's actually possible. And when you, when you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you attend to it, it will change your life it will make you have a rich life with the people that you love, doing what you value, making an impact, not frittering it away on words with friends. I didn't even know those people. An hour a day I was giving to strangers on words with friends, frittered it. Laura, I'm glad you jumped in. We are just wrapping up talking about time management versus self-management. If we're ever going to get anything done, it's got to be self-management. I would love to know if you've got an example of somewhere in your life that you've been trying to fit something in and then you realize maybe today, wait a second, I need to put that first and everything else is going to fall in around it, right? 
Isabel, so glad you're here. Chime in. What do you prioritize in your life? What's the thing that whether you keep a, a written calendar, maybe you keep one on your phone, possible. Maybe you just keep it in your head, but you know how you make your decisions. It's fine, although I encourage you to write them down. I'm, I'm a big fan of writing them down. Um, but no matter how you keep your calendar, whether you keep it in your head or you keep it on your desk or on your phone, what are the things that are on your calendar that you do not let move? I'd love to know what those are because that tells me a lot about who you are. So let me know. Drop those in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I'm honored always when you jump in, share your Sunday evening with me. If you haven't done it already, I want to encourage you, go hit like on the Support Life with Shannon Lovrier page. You can always go to shannonlovrier.com and sign up if you're not on my email uh, list. Uh, those of you who are on my email list, you are going to get a pleasant surprise because one of my priorities is to communicate at least weekly with the people who have told me that they want to have a conversation because I love that. So that's one of my priorities. And Linda, two to three days working out, that's amazing. And it's on your calendar. I know it is. Yes. So good for you. And good for you for not just recognizing it, but taking action to do it. What else have you guys got on your calendar? What is the thing? And especially if it's something surprising, I would love to know. Is there just something that you just can't live without? You know, you know what? I absolutely need to go get a manicure or I'm just not in the right headspace. Hey, if it's a priority and you schedule it and you do it, it's going to happen. I'll tell you what very seldom happens and then we're going to wrap up. What very seldom happens is people very seldom say, um, very, now some do, but people very seldom say, um, you know what, I just don't value eating and I'm just going to go for three weeks without eating because I don't have time. Eventually something gives, right? <laughs> you can start by thinking I don't have time to eat and you might go 24 hours without eating because you're running and some of you I know have done that. You're running so fast and you don't take time to eat and then what happens? Bam! You feel it and there's nothing you can do. Something stops. Something says you're going to have to change it. Don't wait for that to happen to your other priorities. Taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, feeding your soul, nourishing yourself, all of those things, if you put them off, they will eventually catch up to you. Sometimes they catch up too late. Sometimes they catch up when it's too late for you to do anything about it, when it's too late for you to fix that relationship or to reestablish those connections because people pass or people move. So just do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Establish your priorities. Schedule them first. And then quit making excuses. It's on your calendar. Just go do it. All right, you guys are awesome. Share this if there's somebody you know that you think is just harried and, and hassled and could maybe use a little bit of, of encouragement that it's it's not you. There is too much happening, it, but it is you. You get to choose what you say no to. Say no to all the minutia. Say yes to the rocks in your life. I love you all. Thank you for joining me. I am so glad to you've spent a few minutes tonight, and I want you to have a great, fantastic week. Mwah. Goodbye. Take care.